Hey guys, sorry it's been so long. I've been busy, busy, busy. Mainly with band camp, which I have six hours of, and I fucking hate it. <clears throat> anyway, so to make up for my absence quite recently, here is a list I just have to do. I don't know how many facts I'm going to pull up for, for doing this list, but uh, I'm going to do facts about the NES slash the Famicom. So, number one, it, it, the Famicom, which is the Japanese version, originally came with two uh, ha hardware controllers that attached to the console, meaning they don't come out like other controllers. But the co second controller had a microphone, but it didn't have a start or select button. That's good for two players. Number two, they're in the... Uh, Due to South Korea banning Japanese cultural imports at the end of World War II, the NES was distributed by Samsung and was named the Comboy. Samsung also released many consoles in South Korea under alternate names like the Game Boy, the Genesis, the Master System, the Game Gear, the SNES, and the Nintendo 64. Did you know the Minnesota State Lottery was considering using an NES to let people play the lottery. The player would use a game cartridge made by the company that played the lottery. And a modern and a medium would allow that to communicate with the cultural computer. Now the plans eventually fell through due to concerns that miners would illegally purchase tickets by accident. You know, personally, that would be an interesting idea, playing the lottery on NES. That'd be kind of strange. Nintendo once planned to release a netting kit add-on for the NES. The slogan was, now you're knitting with power. How come Nintendo always thinks of the most useless things to make an add-on of? Remember the speed board? That's just nothing but a piece of plastic. That's another one. The power glove sucked. I mean, why would you want to play with a glove? Seriously. Then there's a... Uh... Oh, fuck, what was another one? We get the point. They come up with really pointless stuff. And now a netting kit? A fucking netting kit? Oh. Let's be happy they, they, they didn't do it. Otherwise, the NES will probably won't be as cultural as it is today. The Famicom disk system was an early attempt by expanding the capability of a Famicom. It was the original Japanese version of the NES. I already said that. The new add-on was to use, use disks rather than cartridges, which were cheaper to produce and held more data. Unfortunately, the technology was faulty, and so much Nintendo continued service, servicing them until their patent expired in 2003. It, the, the interesting thing about it is that the NES had an expansion port located at the bottom of the console. That was because Nintendo planned to release a version of the Famicom Disk System for international markets. This expansion, this expansion port was absent on the original Famicom, but the Famicom Disk System connects to the Famicom by the cartridge slot. However, the international release of the Famicom Disk System never saw the light of day, and the NES port was went unused. Kind of pointless. Nintendo was supposed to release a home computer in place of the NES known as the Advanced Video Game System, or AVS. It was going to be a home computer with a heavy gaming twist. That's all it says. It doesn't say what the twist is, it just says heavy gaming twist. What? What's the twist? At least put that there. I'm going on to the next one. The Famicom final design import read because the owner from, please, don't hurt me if I say this wrong, Hiroshi Yomishi, the president of Nintendo at the time. Yomishi wore a scarf with, of a similar color and decided to include his favorite, one of his favorites, on the system as well. He also noted at the time of manufacturing, red and, red and white plastics were the cheapest color of plastic to reduce. So basically, he just wanted to be cheap. That makes sense. According to... Uh, shit, no, no, no. Again, I'm not good with Japanese names. 
Masaki Yumishima. I can't say that. One of Nintendo's hardware designers who oversaw the design of the Famicom reason that it was called the Family Computer because during the 80s the words like personal computer and home computer became widespread in Japan. The word family hasn't been used yet, so he wanted to call it the Famicom. In short, he suggested to his wife, and the idea was rejected by Nintendo's boss, believing the family computer was easier to understand, even though the monker. Okay, I don't know what it's talking about now. Let's move on to the next one. <clears throat> the first production builds of the Famicom had different controllers. The original controllers were featured rubber square buttons, and these controllers were revoked due to the weak lockout and soft buttons that could be worn down. Future Famicom controllers had buttons that were round and hard instead of square and rubbery. Good call, guys. Nintendo had strict licensing policies with the NES, the way to ex exchange encourage quality over quantity, in hopes of the f of <gasps> sorry, in hopes of avoiding the fate of the Atari during the video game crash of '83. Third parties were limited to restricting five titles per year for the NES. All titles were reviewed by Nintendo before they were licensed. The console had a system. They had locked out unauthorized games that didn't contain necessary parented chips to enforce Nintendo's control. The combination of third-party developer pu pu pushback, legal challenges, and comp competition from other manufacturers such as Sega eventually forced them to relax their policies. My question is that if Nintendo reviewed their games and and get the license. Why are there so many shitty ones? It says right here they want quality over quantity, and all those games have shitty quality. So why were half of them released? That's what I want to know. Oof, I don't want to know. All right. Oh, this is cool. Listen to this. Actor and martial arts artist Jackie Chan, and I repeat, Jackie Chan, had endorsed the Chinese Famicom co console called The Little Tyrant, produced by the company of the same name, known in English as Super. The console was marketed as a learning machine to avoid China's ban on video, video game consoles at the time. Wow, that's awesome. Now, I've never seen Ghostbusters, or Ghostbusters 2, so... Some of y'all may know this, but I really didn't. In the film Ghostbusters 2, the Ghostbusters use a modified, um, sorry, got to my throat, a modified NES Advantage controller to guide the Statue of Liberty through New York. How the fuck? I don't, I'm not even gonna ask. I'll have to watch the movie. And finally, uh, you know this. It's about the NES Sapper. I don't know. I don't really know how many facts I said, but uh, they're kind of cool. But I figured um, you might like that. <sighs> Pardon me, I'm tired. I just woke up. So, um, thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, I'm happy. If you didn't, eh, I don't really care. So, you know, if you like the video, hit the subscribe button. If you don't like it, like I said, Eh. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, what I mean is, like, if you like it, that's good for you. If you don't, well, that's you. You know, everybody's different. I mean, look at me. I'm a gamer. And I'm also a fandom fanatic. I have 45 fandoms that I constantly follow. Weird, are we? So the point is, uh, subscribe if you want to. I would really appreciate it. I would really appreciate it. So, um, with that said, hello and good night. It's 9.50 in the morning. Good morning. Good morning. We, we talked the whole day through. Good morning. Good morning.